Police in Ocean City, Maryland, recently got downright Shakespearean in an outdoor performance of Hamlet as officers asked themselves, to beat or not to beat, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or take up arms against a group of young black men doing absolutely nothing wrong. Now, I'm sure everyone is already fairly familiar with this story, and it, it the story itself isn't really what I want to talk about here today. What I do want to talk about is a very interesting uh, discussion, what I think will be, about an advocacy group uh, who have come out with a statement of strong condemnation for these officers' actions, uh, and I am going to explain why these virtuous paragons of ethics and morality are actually every bit as responsible for the violence that they are condemning as they would be if these middle-aged soccer mom Kirins were the ones wielding the batons and the tasers. <laughs> Hey, greetings and welcome back once again to Categorical Imperative. As always, I am your host, Lockie and Liberal, and I do want to thank you all so much for joining me here today. Now, if you are new to the program, I do especially want to welcome you. This is a podcast where we're going to be using legal theory and moral philosophy to discuss current events related to law, politics, and culture. And because I am a low-down, no-good money grubber, uh, if you dig what I do here and you want to help play an active role in helping me to develop this channel so I can reach more people and have an even richer discussion with you all about law and philosophy, I would greatly appreciate your help. Or uh, just as little as two bucks a month, uh, you could sign up uh, on my brand new Patreon page where you will get all kinds of extra goodies from show notes to topic requests and more. So uh, look, if you're willing uh, to help out, I would be very grateful for your support. If you're not in a place to do that uh, at this time, that's all right. I still really appreciate you coming by and spending some of your time here with me all the same. Uh, and that goes for whether you are a brand new viewer or a long time subscriber. All right, enough pouring myself out. Uh, so in a recent viral video, uh, we saw a number of police officers in Ocean City, Maryland, uh, acting with true heroism and civic-minded virtue, eschewing personal safety and putting themselves in harm's way uh, last week sometime uh, to save the residents of their fair city from the menace of a group of young men standing around. Vaping. In public. Outside. Now, we have footage of the heroine ordeal including an officer who repeatedly knees a young man who was on the ground in handcuffs not resisting, as well as another young man being tased for fully complying with police orders. Of teenagers in Ocean City in two incidents that began when police confronted them over vaping, which is prohibited on the boardwalk. The police tased 18-year-old Tajir Griffin, who was visiting from Perryville on June 6th. It also yes, these videos have... Uh, expose the footage of these men in their depraved act of pen vapory committed it outside in the sight of God and man alike. Now things escalated uh, as one of them took one last drag off of his vape pen before putting it away. And then when he was told to produce an ID, he refused. Now, under Maryland Stop and Identify Statute in the Maryland, Maryland Criminal Code, Section 4-206, he was, at that time, under absolutely no obligation whatsoever to produce his ID on demand. Now, Ocean City's finest didn't let a few minor details, like the fact that both public vaping and failure to ID are not arrestable offenses, get in the way of their right to arrest, hogtie, and brutalize these young black men. And to these police officers, I'm sure go the things of a grateful city. But in a recent development, there is one group of people who are speaking out against this kind of violence uh, being used to prevent public vaping. And it is quite literally the people whose public advocacy demanded violence be used to prevent public vaping. 
a group called Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids uh, put out a tweet uh, in which they issued a statement that they themselves called their disturbing statement, which they titled as even more correct than I think they really realize, which is beautiful. Uh, and that reads, We are horrified and outraged by the incident of police violence against these young black teenagers in Ocean City, Maryland this weekend. There is absolutely no place for violence and abuse in enforcing tobacco laws. The purpose of such laws is to keep people healthy and safe. Our communities cannot be safe and healthy when police choose to enforce these laws with violence, often disproportionately against black and brown people. There must be a full investigation of this incident and accountability for the use of force against these young people. Now, there is a lot to unpack there. Um, First of all, it, it, this may seem like a small detail, but this had nothing to do with enforcing tobacco laws. It, this may sound like a petty complaint, but actually this kind of political sleight of hand that people pull regarding definition is a much bigger deal than I think a lot of people realize, especially when you put it in the hands of untrustworthy and slippery politicians and public interest groups who can exploit it in a way that makes it a very big deal and from what I can tell, this group is very, very skilled at using language for its sleight of hand, which is why I think it is worth calling out. Now, just to give you an example of what I'm talking about, when I talk about how, you know, how serious this can be, um, take the term assault weapon, uh, for instance. This is a term that was created. It is not an actual type of gun. It is a term that was created by a gun control advocacy group, uh, specifically a group called the Violence Policy Center, uh, who took advantage of the fact that the 1906 uh, amendment to the NFA banned the, a type of weapons known as assault rifles, which is an actual type of gun. And in 1988, in a white paper written by the Violence Policy Center's uh, founder and director, Josh Sugarman, called Assault Weapons in America, he makes the case uh, that this new term assault weapon should be applied to common semi-automatic sporting rifles like AR-15s to exploit the public's ignorance about guns and gun laws, though they will conflate those common sporting rifles with actual military-style rifles, such as the similar-looking but functionally different M16. Now, this, what, what may seem like a very tiny rebranding, um, has, ever since, made the entire gun control debate little more than a fight between those who swallow Josh Sugarman's bullshit and those who still know better. And for a greater understanding of this whole thing with gun control history, uh, if you're interested, actually, I don't, well, I've done, a, I talk about this a lot. I've done a lot of videos on this. I would recommend this one. It is called What is an Assault Weapon? And I specifically wrote it as an open letter uh, speaking to gun control activists. Uh, I'll put a link to that in the description if you want, uh, but that's neither here nor there. I say all that to say this. The Maryland law defines smoking as to use, carry uh, any lighted cigar, cigarette, pipe, or other tobacco product of any kind, uh, according to uh, Article 2, 106, subsection B4, and Public Law 5-312 of the Annotated Code of Maryland. Uh, I'll put links to those laws down in the description if you want to go look them up for yourselves. Anyways, it's all well and good for these women uh, to demand a full investigation and total accountability for the use of force, but that suggests they haven't really thought through what that would actually mean. Now, when police act immorally in a manner outside the bounds of the law, the police are at fault. When the police act immorally because they are enforcing the law, as in this situation, the police are at fault, and the lawmakers, activists, and public interest groups who pray to play a role in getting that law passed are equally at fault. The fact is, government is a one-trick pony. It has only one tool at its disposal, and that is coercion. To expect anything other than coercion is just outright inexplicable. Now, perhaps it is that these problems aren't getting any better because police brutality and trampling of our civil liberties is merely the effect of a greater cause that continues to not be seen by people like the 
tobacco free mom whatever campaign who seemed to completely miss the forest for the trees. Now, if the government has a monopoly on the use of violence and that is their only mechanism of enforcement, you should not be surprised when the laws you petitioned for are enforced with violence. Why would you expect change? Just because a few of you gave some mild revoke on social media, you have already given these cops the green light to use the violence. You think you're, you're saying, oh, this is terrible. Is really going to change that in any way? I mean, if you want to know how much respect the police have for private citizens publicly asserting their rights and grievances, you need only watch the video that's at the center of this controversy. And when you see officers of the government flagrantly abusing the power they currently have, how does it make sense for you to call for investigations, special counsels, more money for increased training and oversight? What you are doing is handing over greater control and an even blinder trust to the very people who have just proved to you they cannot be trusted with the very thing you are trying to give them more of. In fact, the Maryland government released a press release later that day, and their statement uh, said, essentially, it, it completely justified and condoned the officer's use of violence as all entirely appropriate. So the solution to an overextended, overreaching government cannot possibly be more government. But what officials in Ocean City, as well as the activists who push these kinds of laws uh, to be passed, appear to miss is that such a scene would not have been possible at all had it not been for the laws that they had demanded be put in place. Legislators and activists alike need to confront the fact that any law on the book has to be enforced with violence. Now, of course, the state's purview has grown to encompass a lot of things that we probably shouldn't be using a gun to stop. Victimless crimes, for example, things like drug use, uh, prostitution, or this new moral panic of vaping. Lawmakers may disagree with people who make those personal choices, some of which may even be deleterious to the health of the individual. But perhaps the problem is, we are making this issue a lot more complicated than it possibly needs to be. If I may suggest a simple standard of conduct for activists and lawmakers alike when they are writing new legislation, bear in mind that whatever legislation you pass will always be enforced by guys with guns using violence. Accept that and ask yourself if it is acceptable to submit or pass legislation, especially legislation like public vaping laws, uh, where the desired result equates to nothing more than legislating morality, is it okay to send guys with guns to stop this? And would you yourself be willing to use a gun to stop this? Would you, and I'm, I'm speaking directly to the mothers from that campaign for tobacco-free kids, would you yourself be willing to use a gun to accomplish bringing an end to public vaping? If you wouldn't, don't expect others to do it for you. And quite frankly, I would suggest sending other people to commit acts of violence in your name that you would not be willing to do yourself is even more morally reprehensible than the police actually wielding the, the baton they are doing nothing more than enforcing the thing you insisted they enforce. Well, that is going to do it for me here today. I know this was a pretty short video. Uh, I, I had a computer crash. I'm just getting my system back up. So this is a uh, more of a test run video just to make sure everything is working all right. Uh, but hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, and uh, if you liked the video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up. Uh, if you liked it, hit the thumbs down uh, either way. Um, and uh, if you have any thoughts on it, please do leave me a comment down below. I always, always love to hear from people uh, in the comment section what they thought about the videos. Uh, and then 
uh, if you want to support the show, there's all the links down in the description I, I mentioned before. Um, or otherwise, if you're not able to uh, support it another way, uh, if you could just at least be willing to take a moment and think of one other person you know who would really uh, maybe enjoy this episode or you, who would find it interesting or informative uh, and just share the show with that one person. And if you would do that much for me, uh, I would really be uh, truly grateful for that. So, anyways, uh, until next time, I suppose this has been me, Locking Liberal, for Categorical Imperatives, talking about public vaping laws, uh, and as always, of course, Delenda S. Carthago. <laughs>